is also where the fat shaming starts. Right. Oh, so gosh. the narrator comes up and is like, and then they saw the glob go glab galab, which is a fat fucking piece of shit that should be ashamed <laughs> Fuck you, of itself. Fuck you. So Did ugly. the glob go glab galab fuck the narrator's wife? Because it sounds <laughs> like the glob go glab galab fuck the narrator's wife. It's so mean. It's a like, lot. The fat, shitty, ugly, fucking grotesque <laughs> body squirms it's like a fat yes. piece of shit out of this. It's so awful. It's so mean. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because apparently we can't help it. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath is going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Ready for some high quality children's entertainment, Noah. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I do not have that on tap. Yeah, no, that's not <laughs> today. And that voice that you just heard, that is the co-host of Cognitive Dissonance, Citation Needed, and Lawful Assembly, as well as the host of Season Liberally, the cooking channel on YouTube, Cecil Something Italian. Cecil, welcome back, sir. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. So uh, tell us, Cecil. <laughs> What will we be breaking down today? <laughs> All right. So this this week we watched Stravinsky and the Mysterious House, which should have been subtitled Baby's First Book Burning. Sure is. <laughs> yeah. Sure is. Yeah. Lest the weirdness of the animation obscure the weirdness of the message. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you loved The Lion of Judah and The Pilgrim's Progress, the latter of which the maker of this film actually says was an inspiration to him, <laughs> but you missed the graphics of the day your Dreamcast killed itself in your bathtub, <laughs> you yeah, will that's... love this yeah, movie. Man. Stop maligning the Dreamcast. Okay, so... <laughs> wait. <laughs> I'm Team Dreamcast too, Noah. Just there we go. Team Dreamcast. Team Dreamcast. By the way, patrons of Scathing Atheist, just so you know, I made a joke a little while back about where I where I implied that the Dreamcast had the dual CPU system. That was, of course, the Sega Saturn. I caught it before I sent it out on the regular feed, but the patrons may have heard that, and I just want to apologize oh. for any harm that that may have caused you. I get right. it. I get it. It's. I'm glad that you're coming out and owning it, Noah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. what's well, you important. Know, I, it's, you got to be. You got to be responsible to your listenership. You got to. Yes, just, exactly. You got to learn. Grow with them, yeah. So I'm, that's yeah. what the Creator Accountability Network is for. Is for <laughs> these kind of things. It's actually, their first action was uh, yeah. calling out Noah for the Dreamcast. Right, dual right. No, obviously. Yeah. All right. So yes, but this is a one-man animation that somehow looks like fewer people were involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> is the brainchild of one David Hutter. And I have to read you the description that somebody, definitely David Hutter, wrote about him on fandom.com. And thanks to the friend of the show, Dan Beecher, for bringing this to my attention. This is amazing. Quote, David Hutter is the director, producer, animator, editor, visionary, sound recorder, sound mixer, original song producer, voice actor, writer, screenplay writer, manager, actor, and distributor of Strawinsk and the Mysterious House. <laughs> yes. oh. In a movie that we have not seen since oh. motherfucking Birdemic, the dude literally spelled the name of his own fucking movie you wrong hate to see it. in his hagiographical biography of himself. Brutal. Or maybe it was just one of his huge fans. It could have been one of his huge fans, yes, that made that mistake. All right. One day I will be called visionary. One day. Yeah. Well, you can call yourself visionary when By I myself. Yes. Yes. Exactly. By myself. I will look forward. You can be a nutritionist day. and a visionary just like yeah. that. You just fucking Anna. step up to the Homeopathic plate. Homeopathic practitioner. That's all you have to do. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? So I would like to nominate it for best, worst, face sitting. And yep. let me explain myself. So <laughs> this is a children's movie. So in the children's movie, the books are faces. So they're, they're entire, they have no body. They're just a head mm -hmm. with a face. That's a book. And in order to consume these books, the glab go glab glab, which you will learn about later, sits on their faces and sucks himself into them. Mm -hmm. And it is, I have seen it's the worst face sitting because I've seen much better face sitting in other children's movies. Right. So I think, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So I think this is definitely the worst. 
that he's sitting I've ever seen. The fact that you said glob, glow, glab, glab so casually just now. <laughs> and got it right. I'm he he nailed it. You didn't, but it's he like, nailed it. I didn't, yeah, no. It's like the mountain that uh yes, or the, I, the, the, in dude, Iceland and Iceland. <laughs> Standing in, in, like in front of my computer before this, going, Glob, go, Gab, go, Lab. Glob, go, Gab, go, Lab. Glob, go, Gab, go, Lab. Yeah. Well, don't say it three times. It'll appear behind you. Oh, that's, that's Jesus. And then Fucking you got to sit right on there. your face. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's like Jesus. I got enough creepers. books to keep him yeah. distracted. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You okay. read a lot of sci fi, huh? <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah. A lot of Bill Bryson on this show. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, no, I I came real close to going with best worst fat shaming. We'll get to that. Yeah, sure. for sure. But I have to go with best worst walking because <laughs> it's yep. so true. When it comes to animation, apparently walking is super hard, especially when some of your characters have four legs and some of them are supposed to hop and some of them slither and shit. And this guy just um couldn't be bothered. <laughs> no. No, I have dragged pictures to the trash on my desktop <laughs> with yes. more smoothness yes. than he animates yeah, yes. the characters in this film, which, which brings me to my best worst. Best worst, the guy who made this movie is 100% going to murder me. Look, <laughs> podcast listener, when I die, and it will be soon, no matter what you hear, no matter how clearly the police <laughs> declare it an accident, there is no fucking shot the guy who made this movie is not going to hunt me down and peel me like a tangerine, okay? Yes. There's no <laughs> shit. This podcast is a suicide attempt. It should be the police should <laughs> no, stop no. me from doing it. They should <laughs> knock the microphone from my hand and that guy in China who waits on that bridge should hug me and drive me away on a motorcycle. <laughs> this guy is going to show me each of my organs individually before I die and it's the risk. We t I've never been more certain of anything I won't survive a comedy me, bet. Me, me and Cecil are going to be spared because we pronounced glob glob gab glab correctly. Yeah, but yeah. exactly. So that's, that's, the, that's how you do it. That's, that's, how you, that's how you get past his riddle. It's yeah. being, able, being able to say Glob, go, glab, glab. We're just all in a saw room with a spike attached to our face. <laughs> yeah. Say glob, go, glab, glab. And, 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 and Eli's like, glib, glob, glib, glob. Fuck, yeah. fuck, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know enough synonyms for horrifying to properly describe this animation. So we're going to take a quick break while I dust off my thesaurus. But we'll be back in a minute with all the anti-reading propaganda that he is. <laughs> Hell yeah. Stravinsky and the Mysterious House. And eight, nine, ten. Oh, great workout. Seriously, great workout. Hey, what you guys doing? Oh, we're getting in shape with FitBod. Really? Why? Oh, we're uh, pretty sure the guy who made this movie is going to hunt us down and murder us. Yeah, big time. Guys, look, I don't think that... I know you don't think an app can help you work out, but FitBod can. Whether you're a seasoned gym goer or just starting your fitness journey, FitBod will push you to make progress. It's like having your own personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper, you can work out anywhere with or without equipment, and it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. Wow, that's cool. But guys, I was just Do we personally recommend it? I was using FitBot even before I started working on my health. But now that it knows my needs and priorities, every workout is made just for me. That's why I, No Illusions, personally recommend FitBot. Look, guys, I'm just saying Oh, you want to know where to sign up. Of course, add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash gam. So, did we answer your questions? No, I was just going to say you're probably never going to see him coming, so there's no point in getting in shape. Yeah, that's probably true. Mm, that makes sense. He's behind you right now. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Hello. Who are you and what are you doing in my room? You're Craig Mitchell of Amazon Prime Digital Services. Yeah, so? I brought you a gift. Is this a VHS? For now. But you will put it on the internet. It's film. I made it. Based on a 1980s Christian audio drama. Yeah, I'm calling the cops. You can't. I ate your phone. 
I'm sorry, you ate it? Yep, I'm a bit like the Rat King myself. Anyways, you'll get that when you watch the movie. I I don't have a VHS player. You do now. I bought one and I set it up while you were reading your daughter a bedtime story. Mm-hmm. Not one that praised the Lord, but I think your tune will change in time. So, what do you say? Yeah, I'll put your movie on Amazon Prime. And Craig? Yeah. Don't go glab, go blab, blab, blab on me. You got it, man. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start with a nauseous pan over some poorly animated bookshelves that ultimately resolves on a (laughs) cheap knockoff of the Lord of the Rings map. Yeah, yeah, that Lord of the Rings map. I love that the the whole concept of this is going to be shitting on books, but they steal all of their good ideas from other books. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> also, Cecil, I love your first animation note here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I first saw the first animation come in, the first thought that popped into my head was, you've got to install microwave ovens. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's the thing. This animation is bad in a way that no animation has ever been bad before, right? Because like, when animation technology was bad enough to look this bad, it couldn't look this good. This <laughs> level right. of background, like it does, it just it's an it's an amazing, unique vision of horror and half assedness. It's like shabby chic animation, you know. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's somehow HD low res. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> right. But it's yeah. sparkling at 1080p, these single polygons that are supposed to be animals. Yeah. And I have to explain something because this goes on throughout my notes and I promise I won't revisit it a bunch, but it's here at the beginning. I was really confused. So when I looked at the website for this movie, he says that this is inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia. So I thought he meant like, It is actually inspired by the plot or the characters or the stories of Chronicles of Narnia. So I spent the entire movie being like, I don't remember any of this shit from the Chronicles of Narnia, but there's a lot of books and that guy was an idiot and he does have Jesus in the last one. So maybe there's a glob, 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 and I just missed it, right? So like the thematicness of this world that he's created is so weird, right? So for instance, Strowinski, the little mole person, he lives in a land ruled by the Elohim, right? Which is the Hebrew word for like God, yep. right? But he lives in a place called Owlywood. And I feel like you really need to choose a tone between <laughs> Owlywood and ruled by the Elohim. Yes. They can't coexist. Yes. yes. Thank you. Well, there's also like there's also this weird amount of superfluous detail. So what I discovered at the end is this this is based on some audio drama he used to listen to back in the 80s or whatever, which explains to some degree why there's all of this weird detail. Right? Because it says like, you know, Stravinsky went to the school of Eagle Owl Nicodemus in Owlywood. And I'm like, why does that sound like a compromise where we had to use everybody's <laughs> name for the school? <laughs> yeah. Right? He was a Civil War general, actually. Oh, okay. So <laughs> then we had to rename it. <laughs> yeah. We've got a statue for, about him in, in Waycross, <laughs> yeah. actually, now that I yeah, think about it. Actually. It's like when people are trying to rip off Harry Potter stuff, but they don't want to use any of the IP. So they're like, here at Fart Wart School of <laughs> yeah. Wizard and Squandery. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And then they also spend time too telling you that they live in a forest of elves, but we meet no elves. <laughs> yes. It's, nope. There's so much weird detail. So, yeah. So we get this little opening narration that explains to us that Stravinsky and his friends lived and went to school or whatever. And then we get the credits. And over the credits, we just get random snippets of the movie. Yes. Yeah. You can always tell a quality movie. This is true with every single MST3K movie where you you get to watch most of the movie in the beginning credits. Yep, right. Yeah, this is true with all bad movies and he follows this formula perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to get these terrifying glimpses of the characters that we're going to meet. A, a cello, a, a flesh turd. I don't know how else. Flesh turd, yep. To describe flesh turd. that thing. Appendix. Yeah, sure. Scottish racism. Yeah. I didn't think you could be <laughs> racist against Scottish people, but you can. You can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. We have a good example. And then, of course, we also see a, a flash of the Scarlet Queen. Yeah. The image that this creator no doubt jerks off to. In, uh, Very sharp hands. Very sharp. I do not think the creator of this movie has seen a woman before. <laughs> that is my... <laughs> Based on how he animated the Scarlet Queen, I think he has only heard of them from the Bible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a bad description too, because her arms do not look like real arms. No. They look like, you look like she has Popeye forearms and then they mm -hmm. go to a very sharp point. Sharp point, end. yeah. Sharp, sharp. Right, yeah. the hands are like hand buds. It's right. really Edward yeah. lawn <laughs> hands. Hand yeah. buds, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's just so fucking, everything is so gross and weird in this, yeah. So, okay, so the, the credits wrap up. We, we cut to Stravinsky and his friends heading home from school. And by the way, if I if I seem like I'm pronouncing Stravinsky, like, like I'm forcing the pronunciation, it's spelled Stravinsky, and I'm trying not to say that. So apologies for that. So Stravinsky's and his buddies are heading home from school when they find a forest. Now, how the fuck do you find a forest <laughs> on your way home from school? You would have known it was there, right? Sure. I feel sure. like, yeah. You would think they would have seen it prior, but no, yeah. they definitely found it. This is the first day it appeared. Yeah. Yeah. So, at the, so the cast of characters, by the way, that we have, we have Stravinsky the Mole. We have Harold the Hedgehog, Klopstock the Tortoise, <laughs> and Elbow the Blue Rabbit. Oh, the... Google Translate really failed him on that one. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so, I will say, first off, let's talk. Can we talk about the figures themselves just for a second? Oh, yeah. Sure. So the, you know, this whole movie is a absolute terrifying bad trip. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a chance to see these characters, the most terrifying is Elbow the Rabbit because it looks like the rabbit off Donnie Darko just colored differently. Yes. Yep. Its eyes are super sunk into its head and it looks really terrifying and its rictus of a face never really changes. And then it, <laughs> the way in which it moves is yes. how Eli has described earlier. So it, it's kind of frozen and then it just sort of moves as if someone is clicking and dragging it across the screen. It's terrifying. Yep, it's a, it's a physics-based top that this fucking <laughs> rabbit demon does. And <laughs> on the note of a bad trip, because Noah said this in our private message, and I think it's the best description of the experience of this movie, if you've had a bad acid trip, that's how this movie looks the whole time. Yes. Right, so if, if you've never had a bad acid trip before, one of the things that happens is you'll look at something and it looks weird and bad and you can't really describe it, right? Now I can. It looks like Strowinski in the mysterious <laughs> house. That's how it looks weird and bad. It looks weird and bad like that. I will show people if they'll be like, oh, I'm doing acid. What's the worst I can expect? I'll show them this 30 minute children's cartoon on Amazon Prime and they will not do acid. <laughs> yeah, that'll be way better, way more effective than Nancy Reagan ever was. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the fucking, the thing about this animation is that like only the thing that needs to move moves, right? So like if something raises its arms, the rest of its body and face and everything are perfectly still the whole time. So mm -hmm. yeah, every action that they take is terrible, but the rabbit is worse because everybody else is walking. Right, they're walking and there's just sort of a, like there's movement in the legs and they're moving along and we're used to seeing shit like that in video games and stuff. But the rabbit is hopping and only like the bottom of its feet are moving in the hops. It just looks so bizarre. <laughs> it's the worst. And there is and there is something to be said about bad animation and your brain getting used to it, right? So like as time goes on when normally when you see bad animation, your brain will just be like, "Okay, well that's just how they're going to animate this." And you kind of like you kind of forget about the mechanics of it. This the mechanics change so often yes. that you can't actually forget that the animation is terrible, new and surprising. Yeah, because later he the rabbit's going to move totally differently when it goes yep. up the stairs and you're like, "What in the fuck is happening?" <laughs> it's like yes. fucking when the lady's head turns backwards and she crawls like a crab and exorcist. That's half this movie. <laughs> yes, that's how this movie is. This movie is animated entirely in the uncanny valley. Yes, and exactly. Just to make it worse, there's one song, yes, there are musical numbers, that is perfectly animated that like doesn't acknowledge the rest of the movie. It's fucking insane. We'll talk about it when it happens. <laughs> okay, so, so they go into this forest to check it out and they find a mysterious mansion. And they, they all stand around going like, so, hey, should we go into the mysterious mansion or what do you, what do you guys think? And they're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the plot. It's in the name of the yeah. Stravinsky in the <laughs> yeah. mysterious house. We definitely don't leave. You guys want to break and honor? Yeah, let's break and honor. Yeah, let's, break and let's, let's break and honor. We're, yeah. we're animals in a children's cartoon. Yeah. Let's absolutely break and honor. <laughs> yep. I do want to point out here that, again, like this whole thing is filled with, so that audio drama is German, so it's filled with all these anachronisms from the translation, including when the hedgehog is like, let's go inside, the turtle says, better not, it might be enchanted. And I'm like, do you mean haunted? I don't think you mean enchanted. <laughs> well, so, okay, and, and the, the narrator's like, 
the four pushed through the gate and climbed the stairs. And it's like, well, yeah, because the animation is so bad, he didn't want us getting lost as to what was supposed to be happening <laughs> yeah, no, I guess. <laughs> To be fair, an accurate yeah. description would have been, I clicked on the gate, then I clicked on the stairs. <laughs> animation. First, hard. the layer was behind them, but now it's in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, but they're on their way into the mansion and Elbow the rabbit trips over something in the ground and they, they decide to dig it up and find out what it is. I wrote my notes, please be a body, please be a body, please be a body. <laughs> the animation of them digging is insanity on mushrooms. That was the weirdest it ever fucking got if you really paid attention to that. But yeah. All of the models turn horizontal, <laughs> begin to levitate above the ground and their arms just make... <laughs> Up and down motions. And and the ground like descends below them like like that game Populous on Super Nintendo, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, all my all my references. I get my references uh, just get older and older as we go yeah, today. Yeah, no, sure. I get it. You're inspired by the animation of this for movie. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, a real dig dug situation. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So they they dig into the thing and they find that there's a bag of gold buried in the in the yard. And for his part, Harold the Hedgehog is like, well, I say we fucking keep it and dip the fuck out. We, right? Right, everyone? Right? I love that it's like, he's like, well, if they buried it here, I'm sure they don't want it anymore. Yes, yes. <laughs> they hid it in the garden. I'm sure they were just like, fuck that gold. I just threw that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, I am so sick of all this gold around the house. Do we have a hole somewhere that I could just... <laughs> Like put it there and forget about it. Can can we stop just for a second though and acknowledge that the gold plot is the stupidest? Like the whole movie's stupid, and most of it's actually actively anti-intellectual. But mm -hmm. genuinely, this gold plot makes no sense and is never resolved. Oh, I, I'll I'll explain it to you, and you'll love it. You're gonna love yeah, okay. it. Okay. Oh, get thank there. God. Thank oh, you so okay, much. Okay. Good. Thank you. Hopefully, it's racist. <laughs> yeah. The only way the gold plot makes sense to me is if the Scarlet Queen is a terrible witch and abuser of animals and Strawinsky's just the only one who doesn't know about it. Again, <laughs> we'll get to it. Stockholm syndrome. Right, yeah. exactly. Right, yeah. yeah, there you go. So yeah, but Stravinsky, he's a fucking narc and he's like, no, let's go inside and find out who owns the gold, right? Let's just make sure that we carry it with us the whole time too, though. <laughs> The narrator's like, Harold was hoping to meet an elf. Elbo was scared of being attacked by a monster. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure both of those things will be relevant at some point. Otherwise, no. why the <laughs> fuck would you tell me them? Nope. Jesus fucking Christ. So, okay. So, but eventually they go in the, the house. The, the, and from this point on, this movie will have more Dutch angles than Battlefield Earth, right? To give <laughs> yep. us the sense that this is a creepy house. Every time we come to a new room, it's a Dutch angle. And... Want to point out this opening room is the opening room from Resident Evil. It this is, is sure the same is. Sure rendering, is. same rendering as that move, that room. A double staircase on either side, entryway yep. in the front. It's perfect. I mean, it's genuinely perfect. Yep, same rugs and everything. Yeah, same rugs. Yeah, yeah. So, but but they're like, oh, this place is pretty creepy. And Stravinsky's like, hey, let's go see if we can find some books, right? <laughs> right. At which point. The hedgehog turns to him. I'm sorry, because I'm going to think about this line every day for the rest of my life. He says, let's go find some books. And the hedgehog says, it's a good thing you're not Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There's no follow-up. There's no explanation. He just <laughs> says that. He, well, he says that to Elbow because Elbow's scared, but I still don't know. I, I, I say because because it seems like there has to be some <laughs> conjoining word between those two thoughts. Yeah, no, there's there's not. I don't like your implication of causality yeah. between those things. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, they also, there's a moment here where Stravinsky turns around, but the animator couldn't figure out how to just do turn around, so he walks as he turns around. It yep. looks like he's, like, been smoking crack and has to pee or somewhere. <laughs> it's moonwalking. And Stravinsky, Stravinsky turns from a narc into the most boring thief in the history of mankind. I mean, you just broke and entered into a house. You're like, where's the books? You already right. have the gold. You have a bag of gold. I mean, find something more. Go at least search for porn or something. What are you doing? Right. Stravinsky's like, hey, let's check the basement first. And I'm like, that is a terrible creepy old house strategy. <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> what are you we doing? start at the creepiest place and then it'll be less creepy as we go. Yeah, what right, are you right. doing, man? So, okay, so they all headed down to the basement and sure enough, the whole basement was filled with books. Now, in case you miss the fact that we're looking at a whole basement 
filled with books. The narrator comes in and says they found a whole basement that was filled with books. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, these are some blocky polygons. I also needed the help to realize okay, I was yeah, looking no, at a basement <laughs> full of books. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. So the narrator will constantly be telling us what we're looking at. And again, that's because it's based on this audio drama, you know, and they wanted to like, he wanted to keep the words from that or whatever, I guess. I guess, but it made no sense in it, it, as we were fucking watching it. So he's like, well, well, that's a lot of books. And then all of a sudden the books awaken and they have terrifying little book faces. Yep. yep. Evil Dead. Horrifying book faces. Not a yep. single. I know what you're picturing. It's not that. It's a horrible horror book face. <laughs> it's the scariest anthropomorphic book we've seen since Salty, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. It's 100% out of Evil Dead. I mean, like, this yeah, is Evil right. Dead. Like, it's the book that yeah, starts... No, they all look like the Necomicon. Yeah, they, yeah. the Necronomicon, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's no better than that. It's just a glob go gab glob go glab go <laughs> Yeah, you've got to get your multi-syllable things down here, Eli. Damn it. So, yeah, but... The, right, I wrote in my notes, this movie is scripting my nightmares for the next few weeks, and then we get... <laughs> And then we get the first song. Now, there are several songs, and we're just going to have to go through the lyrics of these things line by line because there's just too goddamn much here, right? Yeah. So the books start singing, and the very first line is, read us and you won't go mad. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if the first thing a talking inanimate object promises you is that you're not insane, it's too late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Also, 100% out of Evil Dead at that point. Right, yeah, won't go yeah. mad yet. 100% right from the script. He goes, read us and you will be glad. There's only so many rhymes for mad people. Come on, you're going to do something. Yeah, obviously. Read us and you will be skilled. Read us and become fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> so, spoiler alert, the message of this movie is you only need one book and that's the Bible. Uh -huh. But you can see how the author got there since he thinks books promise spiritual fulfillment <laughs> in this song. Right. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I, I do think that the, the tenor of this movie, it really should have leaned into this and an obvious use of that last rhyme could have been killed instead of fulfilled. Yes. Like, oh, sure. Read yeah. us and you'll be killed. You know, but I don't know. They didn't lean into it as right. hard as they I, I was expecting read us or you will be killed. Yeah, I, I would, yeah but yeah. it didn't come. And then we get the chorus, which is... Come and read us, 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 read us. Yeah. Here I was thinking the lyrics might get lazy. I was a little worried. God, it was so bad. So bad. Oh, if it was parody, it would be lazy parody. Yeah. And then the this is my favorite part too, because right after this verse, a turtle, the turtle character, Klopstock, starts to come down the stairs, right? So starts working his way down the stairs. But they've clearly only rendered the turtle from the top because its legs are sort of jammed onto the underside like a bad teleporter accident. So it doesn't look like the <laughs> right, it doesn't yes. look like the shell and the legs belong together at all. Well, also as at the end of that fucking chorus, Harold goes, "The books are singing and dancing." In case <laughs> nobody noticed, yeah, no, yeah, we needed that. That was important. So we, we move on to verse two. The books yell, uh, sing, "Read us and become very smart." understand every will and part. These lyrics make my puns at the end of Citation Needed seem like a remembrance of things past. <laughs> <laughs> every will and yeah, part. Man. Like, look, will didn't even have to rhyme with anything, you fucking idiots. What the hell? <laughs> it carries out, it goes, knowledge, wisdom, and intellect promise you can all expect. Not even trying to make sense anymore. <laughs> Yoda <laughs> would be confused trying. by that verb placement. Yeah. And then we get the chorus again. Come in. Read us, 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 read us. And in case you didn't get it, we get it a second time. We get a reprise. Come and read us, read us, read us. I'm like, Jesus, how about read us and you'll have a greater ability to construct a sensible fucking quatrain. How about yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. I really think they were going for, you know, let's try to make reading sound really ominous. So we'll just say it really fast over and over like a spell. I think sure, that's okay. sort of what they were leaning into. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've never been more terrified of the idea of reading a fucking book. <laughs> sure. I'll give them that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. So that song ends and we all uh, fucking sacrifice to the old gods in return. And then... <laughs> They notice that there's this Scottish guy who's apparently just been standing between the shelves this whole time. <laughs> yeah. He's a Scottish troll. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yes, he is Gulbert Bibbercrawl, which is right. fucking like an AI trying for a cutesy cartoon. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, what if Douglas Adams named his character after a head injury? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Gulbert Bibbercrawl. It also, Gulbert is racist against Scottish people, but like, if you'd never met a Scottish person, it's guest racism. It's right. like, I don't know. They have kilts. <laughs> Well, I love to, he's like, well, I'm a troll, as you can clearly see. And I'm like, but we can't see because you're just a guy. You're just a Scottish guy. There's nothing troll-like about you. (laughs) I mean, maybe your facial hair that leads into your regular hair might be a clue, but that's the only thing we got. Yeah. Right. Well, and then and the narrator comes in and says the troll looked very annoyed, and I'm like, okay, well, yeah, no, that's the kind of nuance you're just going to have to come out and (laughs) tell us. He looked vacated to me. Also, I've been to Edinburgh and did a meet and greet. That's how all Scottish people look, okay? (laughs) True. They have resting annoyed face, yeah. (laughs) Can confirm they are all as happy to see us as they were as as Gilbert. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. for sure. So, yeah, so he comes down the stairs. He has to jump down the steps because the animator doesn't have one leg at a time type skills. (laughs) And now he too is good. They're like, what kind of house is this? He's like, well, let me answer in song. And we're like, oh, God damn it. But first he's got to do like a sexy dance, I guess. He does a hip thrust. It's a really sexy. Okay. Think about how bad at animation this guy is. So think about how much time he spent (laughs) sweating in front of his Windows 95 computer being like, it has to be sexier. (laughs) People really need to understand Gilbert Biblical the way I understand <laughs> Gilbert Biblical. So Gilbert sings to us. He says, uh, don't you know this lonesome place, the house that legend does embrace? It's always a good sign when you're sneaking a does into the second line sure. to make your yeah. meter work. <laughs> the home where hearsays spin its yarn and shape our way of life. I feel like he means being gay. He doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't mean that. So to be clear, by the way, life is not going to rhyme with like the fourth line of the next stanza or anything. He just he just tried really hard to come up with a y- rhyme for yarn, and then he gave up. So okay, <laughs> it goes on. Yes, the mysterious house revealed. Boundless is the magic here concealed. No, that number of syllables doesn't work That's better isn't... within the song. <laughs> yeah, secrets locked away. The light, the mysterious, oh so serious house of fright. And this whole time, this weird circle of hair troll around his face is just pelvic thrusting an inch from the camera. Mm -hmm. The entire time, he is thrusting his hips forward, just doing this dance. Once in a while, there'll be a wiggle side to side, but that's really just to reorient to thrust forward (laughs) again. It's it's just to loosen up the forward thrusts. Yeah. 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 (laughs) He goes on, he goes, the house in which the darkness reigns and evil thoughts it cultivates. He means books, people. What he's talking about (laughs) are books. He does. And by the way, yes, listener, reigns and cultivates cultivates were meant to rhyme. <laughs> yep. He goes on dark arts. You'll learn, expand your mind by the powers you will find. Right. A reminder, the villain of this is not, they're not going to open them to comic con, <laughs> right? It's yeah. just <laughs> this is a, eh, those books kind of look like the next. Well, one yeah, happened. yeah, they do. Yeah. And then he goes on uh, yes, this mysterious house revealed boundless is the magic here concealed. Yes. It's secrets are for the wise. Weird ad. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> The mysterious and delirious house of lies. And then we get that again. But at the end of it, he says the mysterious, quite vagnerious house of lies. <laughs> I, I, I tried to is vagnerious a word because I th- I don't think it's a word. No, it's not. So he was going for vagarious. That's what I thought he was going for. Right, which is just barely a fucking word. Like, who the fuck? <laughs> That's a word you learned from Rhyme Zone while you were writing this song. Or sure searching did. for Vagnarius, because that's right. what I found. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah, perhaps realizing how quickly the songs are coming at this point, Stravinsky suggests that maybe him and his friends get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's a good idea. But now Elbow the Rabbit, who's all nervous about coming in, is like, no, actually, I want to learn the dark arts from these haunted grimoires. <laughs> now you hear it? I heard the song. Dark Arts Secrets Life is concealed. I'm getting in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but first, they give the troll the gold bag. And right. he explains that he hid it in the garden because the Scarlet Queen gave it to him 
and he hasn't been able to multiply it, so he hid it so she doesn't find him and beat him. Yes. This, podcast listener, pay close attention. This will never pay off in any way whatsoever. It's <laughs> fucking nuts. Right. So, so okay, so this is from the Jesus' parable of the talents, right? The, right. the, the guy gives, a, the, the Lord of the house gives his three slaves each some gold and says, multiply it. And the wait, one slave makes a lot of money and one slave oh. makes a little money and the other one just buries it in the ground. And that's who he is. He's the third slave in the parable of oh, talents. Oh, right? I see. It's from a book of nonsense. Thank yes, you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, see, <laughs> I, I, I would have never understood. <laughs> well, it's a German audio drama based sure. on a book of nonsense. I had no idea. It was based I, on no, an thank older you. book. Of, thank you. Right. Yes, yeah. Translated by a mentally ill PlayStation 1. <laughs> beating him because he didn't make enough gold was just capitalism. Right. I thought that's yeah, just yeah, how sure, this yeah. worked. I think that's what the, the parable is about. Yeah. But yeah, so he's like, oh, you know, I I, I bury that gold because I don't want the Scarlet Queen to find out I haven't multiplied it or she'll beat the crap out of me. And Stravinsky's like, what? The Scarlet Queen would never beat the crap out of you. <laughs> Come on. Scarlet Queen's great. No, to be clear, in the parable, he is cast into hell oh. for failing to, like, he is, quote, cast out into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth for failing to multiply the gold. So. Rough times back then. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just a bunch of books sitting around and be like, should have fucking multiplied that gold. This That's your so fault. That's on you. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. Gulbert, the Scottish troll that is the third slave in the parable of talents is the least <laughs> fucked up thing we are going to meet in this entire video. So we're going to pause and let you bask in this normalcy while you still can. But we'll be back with a whole new level of insanity after the break. Yeah, we will. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There he is. Look at him. So jealous. Hey, guys, what's up? Jealous of what? Your unemployment, Cecil. I, I bet you just spend all day relaxing, don't yeah, you? Yeah, just taking in the sun. Surfing the web. Yeah. Actually, guys, I started a whole nother podcast and I'm Enjoy actually really- a carefree life. We get it. We get yeah, it. Yeah, and we are jealous. So jealous. Guys, if you feel like you're not putting time into your priorities, have you tried therapy? Therapy for priorities? Cecil- Therapy is for people who go like, and that, that, that's not us. No, yeah. no, no. It's for you too. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So no awkward therapist breakups? Nope. Just click a button and they'll set you up with your next therapist. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, Cecil. Thanks. Man, you're looking so tan. A lot of time at the beach. Guys, I live in Chicago. Chicago Beach. Yep, sure. Greg? Jesus, it's the VHS movie guy again. How did you get in here? Mail. What does that mean? Look, Craig, I've been thinking the light thoughts again. Th the light thoughts? Yeah, you know, the thoughts that are good and pure as opposed to the ones that sleep in darkness. Sure, sure. Anyway, I was thinking what this movie needs is musical numbers. Look, man, I already said I'd put your movie on Amazon. Don't worry. I've added them in and you can use this instead. Is this a Betamax? Yes. Would you like to hear one of the songs? Please, no. No. Scarlet Queen, tall and lean, never mean, eat my spleen. Do you have a jar of honey in your shirt pocket? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our heroes in the basement library when suddenly that cello music starts up again. Right? And Stravinsky's like, hey, we should go check that out. And Klopstock's like, look, man, animating all four of us walking around, huge pain in the ass. Um, 
I think some of us are going to become not animated well, yes, anymore. Yes, we're going to get while you're just like so <laughs> amazing, so amazing, and probably a hundred percent true. <laughs> yeah. Like, why don't you go off on your own and shit? By the way, the whole time, I have to point this out. Elbow the rabbit is standing with her arms outstretched like she's trying to air out an armpit stench this whole time. Yes. Like a zombie going brains. Yeah. Terrifying. I think that he like, they just got stuck that way and he had no idea how he could freeze them where they were. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So they send Stravinsky off to check out the cello sound. So he hops up the stairs with his feet together, walking upstairs is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then we watch him like walk back through all the rooms we've already seen because the animator's like, fuck if I'm only going to get the one use out of the opening Resident Evil room. <laughs> yeah, Spent exactly, four right? hours yeah. in Spider-Man Movie Maker. You guys are going to see these rooms a whole bunch of fucking times. <laughs> I also, speaking of that, he goes, spiders had spun cobwebs in every corner. And I wrote my notes, by which I mean you put two kind of sort of cobwebs in this <laughs> okay. scene. I have to point this out about the cobwebs because they're so cheaply done. They're all flat, right? There's they're, None of them are an angle. They're all like copied. Like the, the, he just rotated the same web a different way every time. And if you try to look at what they're attached to, it's downright Assyrian. Right, like mm -hmm. the one will be attached to the front leg, but the one behind it will be attached to the oh. forward leg or something. And it's all just fucking nuts. It's the cheapest, laziest fucking <laughs> shit. Think about how easy it would be to draw your own webs. <laughs> That's amazing. Unreal. But yeah, so he eventually, he comes into the dining room where he finds an anthropomorphic cello. Yeah. Oh, that cello. First off, this animation... I don't know. It's it's a toss up for scariest animation. It's the cello or the books, but I'm thinking it's the cello because the cello has arms that don't make sense. Right. So the cello, the arms don't belong, right? The cello is whole, and then there's arms, and the cello looks. It genuinely looks terrifying. It looks like a. It looks like a mad animated spoon. It is mm -hmm. crazy and weird and a fever dream. Yeah, it looks like he started to draw a cello and then the curvature of the cello was he was like, oh no, sin, sin. Yes. And so you're like, <laughs> try to not fuck that cello. But then the, then the sin gets reintroduced real fast here. Yes. Sure does. Right, because he's like, well, who was playing you cello? And it's like, I was masturbating. And, <laughs> and at first, yep. I was making myself buzz. Yeah. We <laughs> all thought we were making a joke about masturbation when it was like, oh, I was, I was just playing with myself. We're like, oh, ha ha, masturbation. But I, I'm i pretty sure this is an anti-masturbation thing, isn't it? No fucking There's shot. No it's not an anti-masturbation no. thing. He's like, oh, yes, cello, you must never play yourself. And the cello's like, but it feels so good. <laughs> it is. 100%. <laughs> oh, man. This is also the first time we actually hear the word glob, glow, gab, galab in the movie, right? I thought, I was going to say, like, you know, you, 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 the, the cello is sitting there and you're not sure if the cello is sitting on a symbiont or not. You're not quite <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. You're like kind of sure. You're like, is it? I don't know. I thought I heard a it humming. It could be. There's a humming going on. And at a certain point, there's a horsehair bow on the ground that she was just fiddling herself yeah, with. Right, right. And mm -hmm. it's just laying on the ground. There might have been a couple of drops near it. I couldn't tell. Yeah, right. And then as as it's sitting there, he almost steps on it. She's like, don't step on my clit! Like, really <laughs> loudly. <laughs> Real loud. Really, very strange. Very strange moment. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, hey, so I, I can't help but notice that there's uh, the smell of tea around here. Who do you drink tea with? <laughs> Like, what kind of fucking stupid question is that? Do you squirt tea? <laughs> and she says, oh, yeah, me and the Scottish troll and the glob, glow, glab, glab all drink tea together. So you look forward to that. Yep. But just then he hears like a thousand voices cry out like Alderaan just exploded <laughs> or something in his head. <laughs> Right. I guess it's that's supposed to be the shouts of his friends asking for help. But but it was very clearly just this guy going ah! and then <laughs> stopping it and then, ah! and yes, then stopping yes. it and then, ah! and then lining up the three tracks. So it becomes an a choral like hell mare. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So Stravinsky takes his leave of the, uh, the cello. He runs down to the basement, but his friends are nowhere to be found. Instead. He sees the nightmare I will have until I die. <laughs> There's 
nothing I can do, podcast listener, to describe the horror of the image of the glob go gab gleb. I want you to imagine you were trying to go to jail, right? <laughs> you have to go to jail in a Mr. Deeds goes to Washington situation, right? You, you're going to bid a billion dollars if you can sneak a character into this children's animation that will get you sent to jail for a considerable <laughs> amount of time. What you would put into this is less offensive and disturbing than the gob go glab blam. I had him down as a pink naked man Jabba, right? What a great description. Sure. That is so perfect. Yeah. If Jabba the Hutt, who's that guy with the dog, the British cartoon where he's like, oh, it's me and my dog and we go to the moon and have cheese. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you don't know the British cartoon, then I'm not going to know it, Eli. I'm okay. Sorry. Well, <laughs> it's... It is the it is if Jabba the Hutt. I know who you're talking about. Is it a claymation? You. It's yes. a claymation, right? I don't know yeah. the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's if Jabba the Hutt had the man from that claymation growing out of the top of his hat. That's what it is. <laughs> it's so awful and terrible. Also, this is where we get the, where we start. Wallace and Gromit. Okay, Wallace yes. and Gromit. Right. Yes, thank yep, you. Yep. Sorry, I had to look it up. I looked up British <laughs> dog claymation. And, and there you up, go. So. Bam, boom. And then it came up. Nailed it. And so this is also where the fat shaming starts, right? Oh, so gosh. the narrator comes up and is like, and then they saw the glob go glab galab, which is a fat fucking piece of shit that should be ashamed <laughs> fuck you, of itself. Glob fuck you, so Did ugly. the glob go glab galab fuck the narrator's wife? Because it sounds... <laughs> Like the glob go glab go lab, fuck the narrator's it's wife. So mean, it's a like, lot. The fat, shitty, ugly, fucking grotesque <laughs> body squirms like a fat yes. piece of shit out of this. It's so <laughs> awful. It's so mean. The tone of his narration changes. Right, he goes from like storybook, storybook to this motherfucking <laughs> glob go glab go lab. <laughs> He hits a pop it's filter so with mean. his mouth because of how hard he hates the glob yes, go so glab. It's so mean. <laughs> Brutal. And then, so yeah, and, and the, so he comes out of one book and then he waddles over and he sits his fuck, sits on another book's face. We get Cecil's best worse and the- gets sucked back into the book. Those, <laughs> I'll tell you what, those faces, they are working overtime with that suckage too. Let <laughs> right. me tell you. This is like, you ever click on a porn and you're like, oh, that's not for me. <laughs> this is what this experience is like. But you can't click away and right. it's for like, children. If we turn it on, you're like, whoa, that's poo. And then you're like, no, 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 no. And yeah, then you, you shut right. it off real fast. Right. Like, no, I can't do that. Yeah. Right. But someone stops your hand and they're like, no, 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 it's children's programming. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So yeah, so he he blobs his way back out of that book and he, he notices Stravinsky, right? So he's like, oh, hey, what's up, little mole? And he's and, and the mole, for his part, doesn't just scream, right? <laughs> <laughs> scream and scream and scream until yeah. his mouth fills with the blood from his shattered throat <laughs> and his rendered eyes run down his cheeks. Yeah, no, he doesn't respond yeah. properly no, to the glob, 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 so yeah, so he watches all of this and he's like, so what the fuck are you? And the glob, glob, glab, glab decides to tell us by singing us the third song, right? Now, Eli watched this first and he transcribed all the lyrics so that we could make notes and I could read along the lyrics and everything. <laughs> so I get to this one and I just see Eli's notes say, fuck you, I'm not writing the lyrics to this. And I'm like, <laughs> yep. well, damn it, Eli, I'll write the lyrics to this one. So I started to write it out and then I saw why. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You sure Just, fucking word. Yeah. So here's one of the uh, lines as offered by the closed captioning. The shrubble, double, wabble, gabble, flibby, blobby, blab. <laughs> yeah. It's just that for like two and a half fucking minutes. Imagine a flesh turd scatting. That's basically yes. what you yes. have. Yeah. <laughs> and let me assure you, podcast listener, there is no doubt in my mind that No Illusions was like, I'll fucking transcribe these lyrics. Eli's a pussy. And then he was like, you know what? No, I <laughs> yes. already had one heart attack. I don't know how long on this earth. The recording's on Friday. <laughs> so I want to point out too that this song itself is a... It's an internet thing, right? So yes. if you search for Glab Go Glab Glab, you will find remixes of this yes. song that people have turned into techno and things. And I encourage you to do it because it is actually really funny to see how somebody has reimagined this, yeah. you know, 1980s technology video and 
It's very, very, it's very amazing. But this, this is an internet thing. This is one of those like, oh, it's a meme or whatever. Yeah. yeah no, it's, it's legendarily bad. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And by the way, so this, the nonsense word fucking song, he sings all of the lyrics twice. I'm like, you lazy motherfucker. You're making this <laughs> shit up as you go. Make up two different shits. I don't, I don't know. Make up different <laughs> scrubble bubbles. Right. You can say anything you want. They don't rhyme. They don't me they don't match in meter. It's scribble grabble fuck go 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 go. Yes. Right. Exactly that right it. there, you just did the work that he was too lazy to do as part of the end of your joke. Yeah. yeah. He also the only discernible English words in this song are I am the yeast of the mind. Yes. yes. Yeah. Of thoughts and mind. Yeah, what? That's it. Yeah, that's the line. Yeah. <laughs> he will later say, just like yeast passes on its flavor, which, by the way, is kind of what yeast does, but absolutely not what, yeast, what yeast does. does. Yeah. It's, it's, it's how it excretes and then it dies. Yeah, for well, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure of a lot of things, but I am sure that the guy who single-handedly made this movie thinks yeast is a spice. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was British, that tracks. Mother, would you bring down another yeast packet? I'm afraid I'm feeling in need of a little more yeast on my lasagna tonight. <laughs> like, that is... The exact words he said before he murdered his family and wore them as hats. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, but yeah, but so the, the, the glob go glab glab finishes his song and he's like, see, the point of that was, and I'm like, yeah, please tell me what the fucking point yeah, of sure. double wobble gabble flibby blobby yeah. blab was. He <laughs> says, the point is, is that I really love books. I, I just devour them. I don't actually eat them though. I just consume their ideas. And Stravinsky says, well, you know, not all books are good for you. And we're like, dun, dun, dun. Fucking what? Is this an anti book movie? <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. It fucking is. A, it yes, is. It is. The fucking whole time, like, I'm just going, like, please tell me this is an anti book movie. It yeah. will be, though. That is the right. fucking moral of the story. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere there is a Moms for Liberty fiddling her cello to this. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no yeah. question. 100%. And. I want to be even clearer that this is not like a, well, here are the books we think are dangerous, right? Don't show hardcore porn to your three-year-old. It is a position of, ah, I'm not so sure about books as a concept. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. You're exactly right. You're exactly books. Books themselves, books in themselves are the bad thing in this because there yes. is no distinction. There's only one distinction between one book and all the rest of the books. Exactly. So yeah, so but he finishes up all of this. They have their argument about books, and then Stravinsky's like, "Oh, also by the way, my friends were screaming for help." <laughs> you seen oh, that? sorry, I don't know why I let you get a whole music number <laughs> in before <laughs> I musical <laughs> interlude. Thank you, thank you for the musical interlude. But my friends are in terror right now. <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes. Well, maybe they've been kidnapped by the Rat King, and I'm like, man, we are halfway through this shit. It is too late to introduce a fucking Rat King. <laughs> also into it. German audio drama from the 1980s. I'm going to need y'all not to have a rat king and you know why. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and when they show the rat king later, yep. you 100% know why. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. I'm going to yep. turn around and if the Germans could put all their rat villains on the desk, <laughs> no one's held responsible. I'm going to need you to take the fader on that guy's nose down quite a bit. Okay? <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, I'm going to need him to be a totally different animal, actually. <laughs> German audio drama from uh, the 1980s. Oh man. So yeah, so but but Glob thinks he says like the Rat King, he's just a myth. Now the Rat King will be a stand-in for Satan in this movie and or the Jews. Wait, like, what? <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I didn't get that. It was too subtle. Yeah. So just then, Stravinsky notices his friends. His friends have been in the room the whole time. In his defense, if you're in a room with the fucking glob, glow, glab, glab, you're going to be looking at that motherfucker too, right? Yeah, it's all you're looking at too. But it is a funny moment, right? Because he's been, quote unquote, looking for his friends, but then the camera pans two inches to the left and he's like, oh, they're there. Yeah, yeah they could have startled them. <laughs> yeah, they were that close to him. Yeah. Right. And of course, they're frozen because... It's really hard to animate four goddamn Animation characters. Plus, now we got hard. the glow gab glab glab to do. <laughs> Stupid rabbit has to hop everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's frozen, okay? He's fucking frozen. 
So I love too, Stravinsky's supposed to try to wake him up, right? So he jumps on the turtle once and he yells at the rabbit and he goes, what else can I do? And I'm like, inside this dude's animation abilities? I I guess yeah, that's pretty much it, man. <laughs> he might be able to drag you to the door in a few minutes. Give him a few <laughs> yeah, seconds. Right. Yeah, I don't know. So, but Stravinsky realizes that the only person that can help him here is the Scarlet Queen. So he's going to sing a song about the Scarlet Queen for us. And, and this is one of those things that reinforces, and you know, like, again, I'm going to get a little serious here for a second, but this is one of those things that reinforces the helplessness of Christianity, how you can't do anything because you're a fat piece of shit, glob go glab glab or whatever, right. and you have to ask somebody else to do something else for you. It's never do something for yourself. It's always find some intercessory agent to do the thing for you. Right. It, yes. It's like go to our thing that you pay us money for and we will do it for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Several characters throughout the rest of the movie will be like, well, shouldn't we do something? And he's like, no, only Scarlet <laughs> Queen. <laughs> right. Also, Noah's about to read you these lyrics, but before he does, I need you to understand that they are sung by a grown man doing a child mole's voice. <laughs> so, you know, unless you've been at the bottom of the pit in that guy's house in fucking Silence of the Lambs, you probably haven't experienced what it's like to listen to this song. It's terrifying. Yes, yes. It's terrifying. Yeah, right. It's, it's Absolutely terrifying. And it's it's as off key as that boy in About a Boy singing the end song. Yeah. When he's singing the end song and he comes out and he starts playing, it's that off key. It is, it's shot. And like the weird thing is, is most of the other songs, they're terrible, but they're at least sung somewhat. This one is so off key. It's it's horrifying. It it is dissonant and it like it like creeps you out. Mm -hmm. I genuinely think the reason this song sounds as bad as it is, and this is my hot take and I stand by it, is that the guy who sang it couldn't stop crying <laughs> over the song he wrote about the Scarlet Queen. And this is the best he could do. So, so here are the lyrics. Please hear us, the Scarlet Queen. I guess she gets the the just in her name all the time, right? That's yeah, her first right. name. Yeah, sure. Bring hope, let your love be seen. And I, of course, I wrote in my notes at this point, wow, not only can he not hit these notes, he also can't carry this tune. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know our need, we are lost and alone. Right. I wrote in my notes, if Scarlet Queen turns out to be drag Jesus, I owe this movie a huge apology. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> She says, send, he says, send us help from your royal throne. And I feel like at this point, because obviously Scarlet Queen is supposed to be Jesus or the Pope or something or whatever. I feel like the people who would want this video to exist would also think this part was heretical, right? Jesus ain't no queen, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah no, I think exactly. you're right. I think you're right. He goes on, you're my strength. I will have no fear. Well, I'm weak. I can know you're, he you're near. Oh, my king, the great Elohim. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, did we just change subjects to the Christian God? Yes. <laughs> right, <laughs> yes, but, you did. Hold a fast one. Well, no, we have to be reminded here that the Scarlet Queen is only God's representative. She's not God. She's like a pope or something like yeah, a lady pope right. or something. Right. And it wraps up with send us help through the Scarlet Queen. Yeah. The Christian God is friends with the Scarlet Queen. Yes. Again, <laughs> I just want to remind podcast listeners that at this point, I still thought this was like deep lore from C.S. Lewis. So at this point, I got onto <laughs> ChatGPT and I was like, who is the Scarlet Queen in C.S. Lewis? And ChatGPT was like, you got to stop texting me when you're high, man. Like, I don't know any of the words you just said. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. ChatGPT is sending you numbers for helplines. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Sorry, you feel like you're probably out of this. <laughs> so. All right, so, but he, he wraps up the song and then we cut over to Glab Go Gab Glab and he's like, so, so did the song work or what? <laughs> right? Yeah, 100% worked. Yeah, sure. Well, it's going to have, yeah. But Stravinsky's like, he's, he tells us the moral of the story. He's like, well, you know, this is why it's so important that you be careful what you read because you could read some books and they could turn you into a frozen statue where you would be threatened by a giant man turd. Right? <laughs> Right. And he's like, wait, sorry, that's why your song might not have worked. So what animals can you turn into? <laughs> <laughs> what terrifying flesh colored animals can right. you turn into? <laughs> right. Yeah. He goes like, he's like, don't blame the books. I read them all the time and I never froze into a statue or anything like that. I can, in fact, turn into all these different shapes. And we're like, what the fuck does that have to do with the first part of your statement, man? <laughs> yeah. So 
<laughs> he morphs into an eagle. And by the way, this animation is so fucking cheap and shitty that he can't actually go from glob go blab glab to eagle. He has to turn it like he has to morph into a tiny little ball that then morphs into an eagle. <laughs> yeah. The cheap bullshit. Terrifying flesh eagle, of course. Right. Yes. Right. You know what it reminds me of, Cecil? You remember Muscle Men, but the muscle was yeah, like an acronym? Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's turning into different muscle men. But while he's trying to turn into a pink elephant with eagle wings, that's what they say, right? They say he's a pinky. That those are not eagle wings, right? Those are angel wings, and all the stuff is pink, so that's a meaningless modifier. But he gets too big and twisty while he's doing that, and this this causes him to break through the ceiling of the of the basement. Yeah. <laughs> The narrator pops in here and he's like, he pulled his body through the gaping hole. And I was like, dude, just put silly putty up your butt. You didn't have to make a whole fucking movie when you could have just put a silly putty up your butt. Yes. It's, a, it's a very suspicious line. <laughs> like, I put it in my notes. I was like, gape? What are we talking about here, bro? We got somebody fiddling their own cello. You got you stuffing stuff up gaping holes. I am sorry, man. <laughs> no question. A mother walked in and he was like, I was practicing for the Gaspar God Club. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, because like, there's no other way that this makes any fucking sense. Why would this conversation suddenly move from the basement into the living room, right? Because they, 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 they then crawl through the hole into the fucking living room, and now they're in there, yeah. But as they're doing this, Glob is defending reading books as a good pastime, and Stravinsky is explaining that if you don't you know, watch out what you read, you'll get giant and book fat, and you'll explode. <laughs> right. Which is, again, grotesque. the moral uh, of this story. <laughs> right, is that you might you might turn into an elephant angel wing and burst through your living room floor. If you <laughs> read too much, yes. All right, well, this will mark, I think, the first time that I've ever planted the act break in the middle of a single scene, but desperate times call for desperate <laughs> measures, so we're going to pause here. But first, let me give act f fucking Q to 12 the hard sell. What the fuck did I just see? <laughs> <laughs> Will the images ever fade from my conscious vision? Why didn't we just stop doing animation altogether when we saw it could go this wrong? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the vagarious conclusion of <laughs> Stravinsky and the Mystery House. Scarlet Queen. <laughs> okay, okay, Cecil, come on, come on, come on. Dude, what? You said there was another ad. Yes, but this is one that I think you really need. I do? Yeah, big time. You know how you're always saying like, oh, I didn't get that text, or I'm so sorry, I missed your call. I never say those things. You say it with your eyes and your shy smile. Well, what if I told you you could say goodbye to lousy service for just 15 bucks a month with Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. I don't know, Eli. I like my phone. Do, do I have to change my number? Nope. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's limited time deal and get three months of premium wireless service for just 15 bucks a month. But have you actually tried it? I sure have. I switched my whole family over when they first became a sponsor, and I get the same great wireless service for a fraction of what I was paying big wireless. All right, Eli, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get this new customer offer and to get your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on a first three-month plan only. Speed slow above 40 gigabytes on an unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Mm, thanks. Now we can finally set up that brunch date. I mean, we can. Nice. Not what I said, man. Uh, hey, David. Oh, hey, Mitchell. What's up? So, first of all, I want to thank you for hiring me to work on your movie. Mm, it's a passion project. Uh, sure. Yeah, so I, I was hoping we could discuss your notes on the animation for The Scarlet Queen. Sure, Mitchell. What's the question? Right, okay, so you sketched out a basic character model here, but then 
She also gave me like six pages of sketches for her hands, along with this note that says, tiny, ever so tiny, so tiny that were they to grip you, you'd look unimaginably huge. Unimaginably huge. Yeah. What's the question? Right. So are you talking about your dick there, man? What? Mitchell? No. What a vile thought. She has the daintiest of fey hands because she's a lady of the court. Her tiny hand and mine would make me her strong and powerful prince of the Lord, and she, my queen. Honestly, I would have rather you were just talking about your dick. Why do people keep saying that to me? <laughs> and we're back for still more of the ship. When we last left off, Stravinsky was chatting with the unholy offspring of a turd in a tumor. <laughs> I don't know which character you're referring to. No, oh, that's all oh. of the unionism. <laughs> so, but then that conversation, though, is going to get cut short by Gobert, the Scottish troll, who bounds in to warn them that the Scarlet Queen is on her way. Now, to be clear, every other character in the movie except Strowinski will be like, oh, I'm afraid of the Scarlet Queen. And he will just gaslight them the entire time. He'll be like, <laughs> no, she's great. And the troll will be like, well, I'm convinced she's going to do me physical harm. And Strawinski is like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's yep. very weird. Yep. Don't make me bury you in the fucking garden, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I can't make you multiply. So, yeah. But before we can get to all of that, the Gulbert runs in and he's like, ah, the Scarlet Queen's coming. And then he notices that the hole in the floor where the glob gab glab glab or whatever just popped through. Right. And, and we have to spend like... I don't know, solid two and a half fucking minutes on him being angry about that. <laughs> right, him bitching out the glob go glab go yeah. like a bad Craigslist roommate. Just like, oh, <laughs> we have a chore wheel and your chore this week was not bursting through the floor like Silly Putty going up the creator of this animation's ass. So <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay for that. And, and, and it's and it's even worse than a Craigslist ad because it's a guy who's squatting in this house. I don't know if you remember the origin oh, right, story yeah. yes. of this Scottish guy. He just sort Sort of showed up one day and started couch surfing and they never like the, the person who owns the house is a very soft spoken plays with herself a lot cello so she hasn't really <laughs> kicked him out yet exactly yeah she hasn't gotten around to being like hey the can masturbating you, cello upstairs can you go I, I'm very busy I got my OnlyFans account I gotta work <laughs> here so well so that's that's what I wrote in my notes like okay obviously Eli's the troll he's the cello and I'm the glob glob glab glab and I'm not comfortable with that at all okay <laughs> yep no that's fair that's fair <laughs> Oh, also, while the trolls get mad at him, he fat shames him too. He's like, you know, the problem is that you're a fat, fat, 100%. fatty, fat, fat is the problem. Right? Narrator pops in, you get him, Gulbert, fucking piece of shit. <laughs> so Fuck my wife, destroy my family uh, <laughs> to live above the garage. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, so, but then the scene is like, sorry, we don't know how segues work. Can you just start again being freaked out about the Scarlet Queen? Can we go back to that? Yeah, can you do a couple of dances, maybe thrust your pelvis at the camera yes. a few times? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, but he says like, oh yeah, right, right, right. No, the Scarlet Queen's coming. Glob is also worried about the Scarlet Queen. Yeah, and keep in mind that all of this has been very cartoony at this point. So this is how the conversation goes. Oh no, I'm afraid the Scarlet Queen would beat me. <laughs> oh, Glob is also afraid of him. And then Glob goes, yeah, she's the servant of the Christian God and I've been told I have to choose him or the Rat King. And I was like, whoa, right. different stakes. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes. man, out of left field. And also, he just, like, in the previous scene, denied that the Rat King even existed. Right. And you're just like, what is, wait, look, can we at least be a little consistent? The glob go glab glabs form is more consistent than the plot so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but right, but glob's like, you know, I, I just, honestly, I just don't want to take sides in a holy war. I would just like to read books and know more <laughs> things. And this movie is like, see, that piece of fat fucking shit. <laughs> This is what books will do you. They make you a coward against in the battle against God and the Jews. I mean, the rat king, the rats, the rat. Did I say Jews? The mole is like, no, you just have to obey her and her overlord. You guys are the weird ones. Yeah. 
And she won't beat you unless you don't believe. Come on, man. Right. Yeah. You. She's not going to beat you if you don't deserve to be beaten. Yeah. You fat piece of shit. It's real. Ger- <laughs> Can I say it's real German? It's got yeah. real fucking. What are those famous stories? Uh, Hans Brothers, the Guben Brothers, the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever those stories are that Cinderella and shit are based on, it's got real those vibes. Yeah. So, so yeah, so Stravinsky, he tells him that the Scarlet Queen is just swell and he tells him all about the joy of forgiveness, but he does it in song. Yes, it's time for another song. Aww. Okay, before we get to the lyrics, it's very important that I point out that in this clumsily animated click and point animation for some reason this guy managed to animate an entire solo ballet for the beaver character during this song the mole, seeing yeah. as he never managed to get this thing <laughs> up or down a set of stairs <laughs> i am baffled how this sequence happened so there's a lot of pirouettes yeah he hired it out on thumbtack yeah, yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah so he goes she is patient and very kind. And I'm like, oh, God, of all the voices to give a second song to. <laughs> right? Grants your peace in your soul and mind. When you need, she will be by your side. Trust Signed. Her. <laughs> <laughs> Trust in her as your faithful guide. Guide. Faithful guide. <laughs> right. Yeah, getting all the money's worth out of that pure wet animation. It carries on. She is love, full of grace and light. Give your heart and become her child. What? Yeah. Um, what? Someone should tell Christians how creepy their mythology sounds when it's applied to any other fantasy setting except <laughs> their God. It's weird that they don't, <laughs> they don't just hear it. hear it. Yeah. And by the way, yes, that was child to rhyme with light. To be clear, I just there's Oof. not a lot of words actually that rhyme with light. So I think gotta, it's, yeah, it's like silver and orange. You can't really find. <laughs> yeah. One. <laughs> the song says, are you sick? She's your hope. She's your cure. Eh, I'll still take the COVID vaccine. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he t- heals your life and will make you pure. I've never been so certain a mole is going to do a human sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> make you, it sounds like she's going to set me on fire. Yeah, yeah right? right. Absolutely. Heal your life and will make you. Honestly, if it was an evil queen that purified them with fire, this entire thing would have been worth it, right? Yeah. Oh, the Scarlet Queen shows up and it's just Daenerys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, but then suddenly the Scarlet Queen appears. She was behind him the whole time he was singing. I laughed for so long when she's just standing there. Amazing. Because <laughs> he's singing a whole song of kissing her ass. But keep in mind, he was doing pirouettes the whole fucking time. He knew she was back there. That's why the song was like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> she's super cool. And won't be behind. Right, yeah. right behind you. <laughs> Doing the head gesture. It's like when there's a weird person and I'm trying to warn any of us at a convention, like, uh-huh. I'm pointing with my forehead. Look where I'm pointing with my forehead. Oh, no. They're on you. So, yeah. So she comes in. The Scarlet Queen comes in. This is the weird chick with the tiny little hand buds from before, right, that we did the sketch on. This is also where the cello comes hopping into the scene. And they have this weird moment where we learn that that used to be the Scarlet Queen's cello, but the cello thought she could do better on her own, so she rejected Jesus. Yeah, no, she was actually wooed away, so the Rat King taught her how to fiddle herself. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then she left the Scarlet Queen, and that feels a lot like a Scarlet Queen problem. <laughs> like, if you're not <laughs> fiddling right, and the fiddle has to go out and do its own fiddling, maybe you should probably do fiddling better. Maybe. You just fiddle, fiddle better. Fiddle better, yeah. Maybe play the fiddle with your mouth every yeah. now and then. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe eat the fiddle's ass once in a while. <laughs> Thank you. Know? you. Yeah. So, yeah, but the cello rejected the queen just like we reject Christ, y'all. And then, so, but they, and we go on about this for like two and a half minutes, but finally, the, the, the queen's like, anyway, uh, enough about my old cello. What was the plot here now? <laughs> this is the second time, by the way, that someone has come in and Stravinsky has completely forgotten about his friends in danger and just been like, oh, tell me a little about your backstory. Right? That's cool. That's cool. Oh, this is fun. If you could bring one book, one. Oh, shit. My friends are frozen. Right. Yes. My friends are in some kind of curse. Oh. So, yeah. 
but he tells her that he needs help unfreezing his friends. So we all go down to the basement together, right? I'm so fucking excited. I'm I'm like hyperventilating at what I know you're about to have to describe. That's how excited <laughs> I am. <laughs> it's a, well, it's funny because the first thing I wrote as we go into this scene is I'm willing to bet that if we had this animator's password, we could see the Scarlet Queen do all kinds of kinky shit. And then we get this scene, right? <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> So the Scarlet Queen looks at him and she goes, oh, it looks like they're too deeply immersed in these books. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is our first confirmation that, yes, indeed, it has been an anti-reading movie this entire fucking time. <laughs> because the Rat King enchants the books. I was like, okay, J.K. Rowling's Twitter. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Does the I Rat King that. control the media, does he? It's, oh, my fucking God. But but yeah, she's like, oh, if you'd gotten here, if I'd gotten here any later, then your friends would have turned into glob gab glab glabs. So apparently, books make you fat too. They make you <laughs> fat and stupid, giant fat piece of shit. Yes, and to be clear, <laughs> fucking Strawinsky is like, wait, so the glab 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 used to be an elf, and he was kind, and he's like, yes. Anyways, fuck him. Let's get on to your <laughs> friends. Yeah. Also, by the way, she's carrying this book around, and I just I have to be this because her hands are so inhumanly small and he does he can't actually like separate the fingers he doesn't know how to do that with this animation so her hands just stuck to the side of the book like those little <laughs> sticky slap hands you used to get out of vending machines yeah so i bring in all the cheap 80 toys yeah. references for cecil <laughs> today yeah <laughs> is the grabber hand wacky yeah. walkers yeah absolutely yeah. yeah right well they weren't wacky wall walkers but they were related to wacky wall walkers made out of the same shit yeah so but yeah, this is the actual exchange they have about the glob. When, when she starts talking about how reading can turn you fat, she says, and I quote, he lost his slender form and became what he is today, big and fat and slow. And Stravinsky says, how awful. And she says, it is. And he's standing right fucking there the, the whole time. When it when it flash cuts over and the glob go glab go lab is standing an inch from their conversation, I pause the movie to laugh for six full minutes. Because he's even got the like, oh, oh yes, yeah. Um, yeah exactly. <laughs> there's a part where the glob go glab go lab pulls out his phone and just immediately joins Planet Fitness. <laughs> like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm done with this. Here's the fitbod.me, please. Uh, you guys yeah, are so yeah. sorry. You're absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> This is why they can't afford a .com, Cecil, because the assholes like you <laughs> won't give out the website. So, yeah. Believe in you, fitbod.me forward slash fun <laughs> Geo, dot Geo cities. <laughs> So then, okay, and then just when you thought, like, well, surely we've got the weirdest goddamn most fucked up, most make funnable moment out of this movie already, the Scarlet Queen decides to beat off his friends. Now, yep. you probably think that I'm exaggerating. Nope. But this is the actual goddamn line from the narrator during this part of the movie. This is the yikesiest part of the whole yes, movie. Yes, right. The narrator says, the Scarlet Queen began to lovingly stroke each of the three friends for a long time. <laughs> and while she's doing that, she's rubbing the rabbit's ears like a cock. <laughs> like a cock. Is, <laughs> like a no cock. There's no way like to look cock. at that and not think of her jerking off those ears. Look, I know I am going to die with the guy who made this movie's hands wrapped around my throat. That's fine. <laughs> I've resigned myself to it. <laughs> but what I won't take back is that she's jerking off these animals. Okay. 100%. No Nobody who has seen a jerking off go on <laughs> or has even read a good description of it would think this is yeah. anything but jerking yes. off. Yeah. Yes. You can't you can't mistake this for anything. It clearly looks like she misses her cello. Yeah, That's right. what it looks yes. like. It looks like her and her cello had a deep bond and she is missing that bond. Well, and the cello's right here too, so she's probably just trying yeah. to make the cello jealous, right? Maybe the cello likes to watch. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's possible. <laughs> a Jerry Falwell situation. They do end up together at the end, so there we they go. They do. They do. Also, we have to point out this horrifying fucking detail cuz as she's stroking off all the animals, one of them's a hedgehog. The narrator comes in and says, "Harold the hedgehog" Spikes made her hands bleed, but she kept stroking anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going wow. on to the dark web for that this kind of Really <laughs> dedicated. Really dedicated. This is, I need this kid to get sent to the principal. I don't know how old he is, but I need him to get like a school counselor appointment. 
<laughs> so, yeah. And then so she finishes stroking off all of the animals and then she taps each of the books and she turns them to ash. So her magic power is book burning. Book burning. <laughs> book, it totally book destruction. Is. Yeah. And bad books, we all know, turn into rats, which is yes. what happens here. She burns the books. They immediately turn to rats. And then they go across Europe and poison wells. I think right. Is what exactly. they did right afterward. <laughs> so yeah. I, honestly, the animation on these rats is fucking insane because the rats start running away. And it is impossible to tell which items they will be in front of and behind as they walk <laughs> past them. You know, I was making bets with myself. Like, well, they'll certainly be in front of the chair. No? Okay. All no. Right, then. No. <laughs> so, and then the, the rats run away and the Scarlet Queen turns to Glob, the cello, and Gulbert and, said, and says like, see, satanic house you guys have been staying in. <laughs> Satan <laughs> house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is the Evil Dead house, guys. Look at yeah. the books. They're yes, all obviously mean now. it's the Evil yeah. Dead. So, and and just then they notice that the Rat King has been hiding in the wardrobe, jerking off to this the whole time. <laughs> He's literally been watching from inside yeah. the closet, like yeah. Jerry Falwell Jr. Yeah. <laughs> literally, like Jerry Falwell Jr. <laughs> And he's got like a giant Rita Hayworth hole in the wall right, from Shawshank yeah. Redemption mm-hmm, that he yeah. has. He's dug through the wall. And this is this is the most caricatured rat I've ever seen in my entire... Like this is 100% like just like J.K. Rowling made her coin loving little goblins yeah, into right, something. Right. Yeah. This is 100% modeled after like bad Jewish like cartoonist art that they had during yes. the Nazi holiday. That's what it looks yes. like. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. I, I was surprised it didn't have the voice, like Eli doing Moishi's voice. Right? No, <laughs> no question that was his first take and Amazon oh. was like, hey, so we're super excited to take on your animation. Um, it is technically illegal right now, so we do <laughs> need you to do the Rat King's voice. There's a huge part of me that wants him to sing this song like that and then there's a part of me that's like, you'll never get, you'll be canceled immediately if he does that. <laughs> Yes, I am the king of the red force. I'm the greatest force of all. Hey, Patreon oh, extra. No. We can oh, put it up. No. But what they Yikes. did instead was they used the only African American voice actor in the entire fucking movie. Right? Oh, like, you are right. They didn't Holy exactly shit. make it better. They just made it different, is all. Oh, this we is, made it differently worse. That's yes, all. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And so now the Rat King is going to sing us a song about how someday he's going to kill God, right? Oof. So here, here once, once again, I've got the lyrics for you. Yes, I am the king of the rat folk. I am the greatest force of all. Okay, back off a little bit, man. Where the, <laughs> this is the actual line, where the realm in lies with my dark cloak Good luck diagramming that attempt at a sentence. Because <laughs> of the like, folk. To, to yeah. be clear, he's not wearing a cloak, dark or otherwise. I just no. think, feel like that needs to be pointed out. Anyway, bring despair and we'll make you fall. Oof. Yeah. And, and then they pan to the room and all the books are doing the same dance they were doing earlier with the glab, go, glab, glab. And when they were asking when they were going to be read earlier, when they were like, readers, 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 readers. And they're doing <laughs> yeah, that exactly. earlier. Now they're still dancing, but now they have mean Goomba eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> they have like they're, they're angry bird Goomba, eyebrows yeah. now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So then we get our chorus. Tremble in fear, my child. Follow me into everlasting light. I am your fiercest foe. Oh, how frightful, terrifying is the Rat King's evil might. Okay, that's too many syllables. All right, I'm not even a poet, and I know that's bad, okay? Does it work? And this voice actor really tries. He's like, oh, how frightful, terrifying is the Rat King's evil might. (laughs) (laughs) He carries that. He goes, for no soul ever resists me. And I'm like, fucking elbow Harold and Klopstock just resisted you, dude. Come on. Then he says... And my regime is fierce and grim. I would love to know what that guy thinks regime means. I mean, Israel. <laughs> he means Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I will spread my kingdom of terror and destroy great Elohim. I feel like his enemies don't call him great. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, tremble and fear, my child. Follow me in everlasting light. I am your fiercest foe. Oh, how frightfully terrifying is the Rat King's evil might. And this dance is very sexual in this section. I mean, you thought Gub Club the fucking troll was thrusting. The (laughs) Rat King is like twerking. He's got a pull between his cheeks. It is intense. Well, and he's surrounded by books, so it has a very book cocky feel to it. (laughs) Thank you. 
They are so proud of that. I was so proud of that. So I just wanted to hang oh, up. Captain, my fucking- captain. Oh, I'm on my chair. I'm on my chair. It's so good. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So good. I also want to point out what the, uh, an amazing thing in the notes here. Eli wrote, this looks very sexual. Cecil wrote, it looks like he's taking a dump. Those are responses <laughs> to the same stimulus, people. It is yeah. insane. We both watched the same thing. We and saw the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But honest, I mean, I genuinely mean this from my heart. If the Rat King had just vividly jerked off onto the faces of these <laughs> books in a circle, it would be the third most horrifying thing in the movie. Yeah, oh, right. Man. If these books were just like, spatter me in your cum, Rat King, I would have been like, yeah, it's better than when the glib go glab go lab turned into yeah, an right. elephant. No, exactly. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so the Rat King leaves. We should make a children's movie. <laughs> we should. <laughs> It looks really easy, actually. Yeah, I think we're yeah. good at this. I think we're good at this. It's a good brainstorming session. So the Rat King leaves, and the narrator starts talking shit. You know, he's like, oh, the Rat King left like a fucking whimpering, whining asshole. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Pussy is what he was. <laughs> and then Stravinsky sucks up to the Scarlet Queen some more, right? He turns into like, Scarlet Queen, you're so awesome, and your hands are so... Sexy. Tiny. <laughs> so tiny. They're, they're bleeding, but they're sexy. Yeah. Yeah. They're covered in blood. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, also the Scarlet Queen says, please be more careful in future. <laughs> she right? does say that. Yeah, I, I know that's just a, a case of the script writer wrote it wrong and the voice actor was like, he told me to just read these words and fuck him. I'm not adding extra definite articles <laughs> on his behalf. I'm not getting writing credits. So, but then the Scarlet Queen basically says, well, you know, now is the time when we almost decide whether we shall serve the Lord or the Rat King. And we're all like, fucking what, man? <laughs> she, the Scarlet Queen's like, don't be like my old cello. And again, the cello is right fucking yeah, right there. there. Oh, there. you hate to it's see it. It's right there. My wife is friends with several lesbian couples who used to date each other. And the Scarlet Queen is worse. That's what I'm saying <laughs> right now. So, yeah. And then Glob turns to her and she's like, and he's like, hey, I'm so sorry for being a fat piece of shit all the time. And she's like, you will not be forgiven or have any resolution to your <laughs> she character. Le- at she all. ignores she him. She he says, him does. please forgive me in this children's show. And she's like, mm hmm. Bye, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah. So, and then Gobert takes some money and runs, right? Yeah. They're like, Gobert couldn't decide who to serve. So he just took his bag of gold and hauled ass. The end Fucking of Gobert's story. <laughs> He's Scottish. I get it. This Scott left faster than the Scots left our Q&A. He <laughs> left faster than <laughs> yeah. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay. But then this, they all go outside. The Scarlet Queen decides to forgive her cello, right? And they're going to they're gonna reunite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the Scarlet Queen floats away because walking is a really hard to animate. It's so much easier. For- <laughs> Floating is awesome. Yeah. Floating works great. Why didn't I make them all birds? Right, Fuck. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and she takes Joe. Now, at this point in the movie, I have to I have to say this. I paused because like there's a, I, like I have a certain like if I've gone this many minutes without a break, I take a break, you know, kind of a kind of a clock going when I'm doing these movies. I paused this movie at this point because my clock went off. I looked and there were, minus the credits, 34 seconds left in the movie. (laughs) And I had to convince myself not to take a break. (laughs) I don't know that I can. Oh, that's a great excuse to not be watching this for a minute. But... uh, (laughs) So, and by the way, he says, the narrator, as they're floating away, the narrator says the cello had, quote, returned to its master. (laughs) Yeah, man. That is creepy as fuck. So, okay. But Stravinsky sure is happy that everything worked out okay for everybody except for Glob, who can fuck himself. (laughs) Fuck you, you, Glob, you fat piece of shit. Fat, gross, home-wrecking piece of shit. (laughs) Fucking appendix turd. You think I can't hear you make her come through the walls, you goddamn (laughs) asshole? (laughs) I'll kill you both and then myself. I'm the narrator (laughs) of the movie. (laughs) But yeah, so everybody sure is happy the Scarlet Queen saved them from reading books. And then... That night, we see Stravinsky laying in bed, deciding to devote his life to living for the glory of the great Elohim. That's the end of the movie. That's what the narrator says is happening. (laughs) 
The kid commits to being even more boring. Great. Right. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and also, by the way, so they back away at this point and we see like a cross section of his whole little mole house. And there has been so goddamn much effort put into this little fucking mole <laughs> house that we're going to see for one second at the end. Of, as yeah. though he's trying to say, see, there are some things I worked hard on, just not the glob, 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 glob. <laughs> just one dance and this house. That's what, right. I, that's what really I worked hard on. You know, it's like when you start a project and you're like, oh no, there's got to be a column for everything in this sheet and then you forget a bunch of people for what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. it's like that people right. get no, it exactly. at home so exactly they like they that understand. this movie is exactly as well done as your spreadsheets so <laughs> <laughs> so then we get the credits this is where I first learned that this was based on a German audio drama from 1982 and so much shit suddenly made sense <laughs> I found did you find it did you go on YouTube and find it oh god no there's no English version that I could find but there is the German version and you can hear the crazy it's like wo ist ein Heiger Scarlet Queen und und ein Rat King und und ein Rat King und tut ein Jeitelhof und ein Desiam highly recommend alright alright for our German happens. listeners Taru get out there German, find Taru is tell not me. German Taru is right. not German so, I'm pretty sure she's oh, German also nope. I have to <laughs> <laughs> I also have to point out, under the thanks, it's got like, you know, thanks to all of the people, whatever. It has Jesus Christ. He's first build and gets a bigger <laughs> first fun. build. Yeah, thank like, you. Like, fuck yes. our church in the face. Jesus Christ, baby. Yeah, he gets the real shit here. So that's amazing. All right. So I have a two part question. I want to close things off with. Have you ever seen anything weirder than this in your whole goddamn life? And if so, what drugs were you on at the time? And do you still know where I could get some? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say this is neck and neck with that puppet movie you guys made yep. me endure. Yeah. This is neck and neck with that. That was a terrifying experience. Or that fish animation, the fish thing, or oh, all yeah. of Salty's career. Yeah, but I don't know. This, this is a solid contender for the weirdest fucking movie we have ever watched on this show. I will give it that. I don't ever want to do a hallucinogen again. Like, I don't no, trust. No, I'm done. This cured me. This cured me. These <laughs> to stay yeah. in the, I, the, these don't, I don't trust these images to stay in my conscious mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the second the glob glob gab glob shows up in a trip, the trip is over. Yeah. 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 It's, no. He's just hanging on to the spirit molecule. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Cecil, thanks so much for hanging out with us. And as always, uh, just forward any mental health expenses related to today's <laughs> appearance to our bookkeeper. We will get you reimbursed. Oh, thank you. I will, for sure. And of course, be sure to check out the show notes for links to Cecil's other shit. You owe it to him after he watched this insane bullshit for you. You owe it to me. I expect lots of Glob Go Glab Glab references on Lawful Assembly from now on. Okay? <laughs> I will make sure we talk about a bump stock and then the next week is Glob Go Glab Glab. Glob Glab Glab. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. That episode yeah. could just be called Where Is Your God Now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that episode be, could be called The Guy Who Made This Movie Is Making Me Record This at Gunpoint. Yeah. I actually, <laughs> at Gunpoint, yeah. Better, I have to respond. I have to pronounce glub, glub, glab, glab correctly. Ten I am times in blinking a row. Morris code as I <laughs> yeah. record. Yeah. Right. Hopefully you can hear my eyelids. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Stravinsky and the Mysterious House. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, though, because we still need to lure you back next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, in confusing times like these, we're all a little concerned about our health. But what if I told you cancer could be cured oh, by some hard squeezed apples? That's right. What? We'll be watching the Gerson Miracle. God damn it. Okay, so with that to look <laughs> forward to, we're going to bring episode 448 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing of the Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Eva Jeff on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions promising to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The cello still played with itself. It just did it when the queen went to bed. <laughs> the dead-eyed dancing books went on to be right behind you. <laughs> Scottish troll was actually lovely in person at the Glasgow live show. I and mean, we don't want him to think we didn't enjoy meeting him.
right. So Eli, there was some uh, like uh, wondering about this while you were away for your bathroom break. Was it a number one or a glob gob glab glab? <laughs> It was definitely a glab, 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 glab. Oh, glab, glab, oh, yes. glab, 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 glab. That's actually the noise it makes as it hits the water. Every That's time. actually what he's named after. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, all right. Yeah, you're going to die. You're 100% going to die. You're 100% going to die. No, this guy's going to be like, well, you know, they're comedians. I guess nope. agreed. Nope. No, nope. absolutely <laughs> not. No. <Nope. laughs> <Nope. laughs> <Nope. laughs> He's one centimeter from your nose tomorrow morning. Right. Yeah. After no, the no release, question. he's yeah. one center yep. centimeter. Yeah. Died doing what I loved. Well, because you're going to just, I like the, the, there's nothing that I know about you more than I know that you would just, you know, carry the bit out to the very end. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You yeah. would be pulling out your spleen and you're like, oh, it looks like a gob, glab, 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 doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that spleen. Asshole. You notice the smoothness <laughs> with which my spleen just came out of my body. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right. And fit body hat. I love how it, your voice kind of breaks on spleen a little, which is perfect. It's just, that's a touch that really is just perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chicago has a beach. It does have a beach. beach. You guys have a beach? We do. Yeah. We have the lakefront Lake beach. Lake Michigan. Yeah. It's, it's cold for nine months a year, but yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, And, I mean, and it's kind of really cold, cold the other three. I mean, it's, it's, it's most, like yeah, three mostly week, cold all the time. Three yeah. week period yeah. there where it's actually yeah. very nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Oh, did you know, fun fact, um, COVID vaccine is what caused my heart attack. I learn about that every three days or so in an email. In an email? Yep, yeah. I get an email nice. every three days Very or so. Very cool. Very cool. I'm glad doctors listen to your show so, so Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so yeah, so research. Research. A lot of awesome. medical experts. It's got to yeah. feel so good to be that protected, Noah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.